Buterevu, uchiali ku BBS Telefina, yeyo buwaka waka buwa buganda, nkwa niliza nyo mkasera kano. Um, Gaburi jio bu tutelo kubatu usako, evi ensonga, evi ba bigenda maso mguanga, noru na kuoru wali luku sawe no yenyini, wali uo uh, ten songe nkuru. Uh, Jetugendo kubatu usako, tubatu wala wali mparlamenti ya guanga, uh, jetugendo ukulaba abakungu wakufamu banka ya Uganda nkuru. Ngabaga simba gana na kachiko kanu, akano uh, nyeleza kukoze science mbi uomu uo msoro, uh, kusase uh, kusonge zikuata kumivuyo ejejazu eh, uliwa, mwalipota yyo eh, mbalilizi uetobi ya governmenti, ya vayo na haba hako emi watu wa jayaraga wakati mungkola ye milimu mbanka eno enkuru mzukuru wa mgema katumba jiradi abu tugendo kutambula banafe banama ulile banafe batu usenda wali ku parlamenti iranga bagenda tutusa kubutelevu ya bintu nga yivitambula tugenda bilaba biyo nanga wakuru wano tubalaba bakumia wate mkachiko kanu aka kwa sase sigwe mulundi ya gusose wakuru wana wabanka ya yugane nkuru wakubako mkachiko kanu wakula vika kuma soga wakachiko kanu bali yoko sabiterie ya mabega wajukira bulunji nyera tuwa kutwala yo butelevu nulave bintu wengili jibi ya tambula ni baba lagira wakome wakuru na kuru wali ruwa kutano ura sabiterie jetukubie ya mabega na ye tebaso wade koma o Abweba chunibongeza yu kutusi za darate urunaku uruwa lero. Nolwe chutusu vila haba kuruwa no, nga wakule mbeduwa mprofesa uh, mutebile. Ngono ye governor bank nkulo ya Uganda, nga liwa muna mnyuka we, um, Louis Kaseke ende, tuwasubiru ukulevi kakuma suga kachiko kano, okubake ensonga ziba nyonyola. E muku nsonge nkulu, yabagendo okunyonyola, ere ya nukuru wayo mwaripota. E ya atone jeno, ya linsonga engiri banka zinu ezenja ulujeza garu wamu. Nga yensonga jivali babuza, ira ye muku jetugendo kuulira unaku uruwa lero. Norechu njaga na kutuwa lewe buterevu, ate ulirevi ntunga yivitambula, uigobedele, ulave ensonga zineza banka ya Uganda nkuru, wazigendo kutambula uruwa lero mparlamenti. Um, would you allow me to make, allow me to make some remarks and then oh, sure. leave it to the EDS to handle? Whoever, is handle, whoever handles is your prerogative. Thank you, your thank you very much, sir. If you have any remarks to make, please make them. Thank you, sir. <laughs> I have very brief remarks. Um, I have already said that um, board members are not here. I will only go back to that. <clears throat> um, Mr. Chairman, in conducting the supervisory role of the central bank, the primary objective of the Bank of Uganda is to ensure the stability and soundness of the banking system and protection of depositors' interests. I, I'm sure you know that. While performing this role, there is a possibility that financial institutions may run into problems. In such circumstances, the Financial Institutions Act 2004 prescribes the type of action the central bank should take in the different circumstances. Um, these uh, types of action include issuing directives on collective actions that the financial institution must comply with, or placing institutions under statutory management, or placing them under receivership, or liquidation, depending on the nature of the problem. The seven defunct banks, which are covered in the general report, were put under resolution largely because they were insolvent. In conducting bank resolution, the central bank is mindful of the need for the depositors to access their funds in the shortest time possible. We're also um, mindful of the need to keep the costs of bank resolution very low. But most importantly, there's the need to protect the remaining part of the financial institutions um, from any contagion or, or systemic shocks. While carrying out bank resolution, the central bank has identified in several cases other banks that have purchased the assets and liabilities of the banks under resolution. 
purchase the assets and assume the liabilities of the banks. The decision and actions of the selling of assets of banks placed under resolution were based on the objectives of protecting depositors' interests, increasing the confidence of the banking system, and fostering financial sector stability, which is a core reason of our existence as an institution. I would like to emphasize, re-emphasize this committee that the principal objective of financial regulation is sustain stability and soundness of the banking system. This is great, would be greater in the mind if there is erosion of confidence in the key stakeholders and in particular the depositors. Indeed, in the, claim, in the ranking of claims in the insolvency of financial institution, the Depositors Protection Fund, the Deposit Protection Fund ranks first. Next in the rank is Depositors, sorry, Liquidators Expenses, then the wages of employees of the institution. These are followed by the, credit, the secured creditors, uh, then unsecured deposits, and then these are followed by other types of creditors. It is only and only if there are residual assets that shareholders get anything since they rank at the very bottom of the distribution order. Honourable members, I would like to end by saying that the resolution of banks is a complex exercise and each bank based resolved has its own unique circumstances. There are a number of challenges encountered during the resolution and one of the main challenges is litigation by different shareholders. There have been several court cases against the banks under resolution spanning many years and some of these are still unresolved today. The other challenge of bank resolution relates to difficulty in collecting and recovering of loans, which could be due to encumbrances placed on the collaterals, or because the loans are unsecured, or poorly documented. There are also delays that result from the requirement to verify creditors and their claims, particularly for those banks with poor documentation. This may also apply to the depositors. All these challenges have had implication on the timeliness of bank resolution. Notwithstanding these challenges, we would like to assure you that progress is being made to conclude bank resolution. In addition to paying off depositors, we have twice paid the creditors of credit co cooperative bank, Greenland Bank and International Credit Bank from the proceeds of the liquidation on a prorata basis. Furthermore, in September of this year, we made a final call on creditors of credit of, of the creditors of uh, Greenland Bank, Cooperative Bank and Global Trust Bank in liquidation. We also continue to pursue this, the pending court cases that are currently affecting the conclusion of the resolution of some of, bank, of the banks. Our appeal to the committee is that as you engage us, be mindful of the ongoing court cases which have implications on how much information we can divulge on the affected banks. I thank you for listening to me, and if you don't mind, I would like to invite the Executive Director's supervision to give us, to take us through the um, questions and answers. EDS, EDS. Uh, uh, 
through your governor, thank you, Chair. Uh, as you have advised, you have advised that we start by reading through and then getting our response. So, so um, sorry, Chair. Sorry, chair. Uh, my name is Tumuweine Tunemanzi. I'm the Executive Director of Provision. Sorry. My name is Tumuweine Tunemanzi. I'm the Executive Director of Supervision at the Bank of Uganda. Oh, they are too long. Too, too, too. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> um, uh, through you, uh, Governor and Chair. Yes. The procedure matter. I'm uh, Sewu Joseph Gonzaga, Member of Parliament, Kano County West. And the, uh, the procedure matter I'm raising is that. Uh, the Governor Bank of Uganda has given us a document, and this document he has skipped two paragraphs. I don't know whether they are liable for ex we expand them, or he just forgot them, or he never saw them. And the, according to what I've read, they are very pertinent in what, in what we are investigating. I would go to page two. He has skipped paragraph where is please note that over the years. He skipped that paragraph, and then at the end, before we appeal to the committee, there is a, a paragraph reading, we appreciate the heightened interest in matters surrounding the resolution of defunct banks, but our hands are tied and Bank of Uganda has to operate within the law. So I don't know whether it was deliberate, because we have the document with us, though as a professional teacher this document has no reference all was written is, but see that one. It is not signed, it has no heading, but it is read to us. So uh, that's the procedural matter I'm raising because I'm sorry if I'm bringing in professionalism because the matters you are handling are about Bank of Uganda, not any other institution. Managing our money. Okay, I think what he did was to do an executive summary of the document. So what the record will capture the document as it is, what he has spoken orally is an executive summary. Of the so we can leave what he has left out. What the, the reason he gave us the document is for it to be on record. Okay? Let it be said. So the, 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 the document we have is this one. But Mr. Chairman, sometimes you attach this... Uh, these documents on evidence as you learn table in Parliament and the member who is not here who might read this document with some information that has not gone on record because that's why you are recording us what do you, how do you think we manage this matter in that circumstance he's going to, he's going to sign, countersign the document which he has given so we can leave those paragraphs here and ok, okay let me rule let me direct Honorable Seungu the document which the governor has given uh, is the opening remark. So what he has done, he has given us a copy. So for purposes of the record, he, he, we have asked him to sign this document, and it is what is on our record. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, just think, could you ask him, put it on record, that these two paragraphs, because one of these paragraphs... I have already read the Honorable Seung. Let us not go into okay. that. We have a lot of work to do. What we have... The document he assigned it, and the paragraph you are concerned with, that which too. I should, the paragraphs which I should also be concerned with, have been counter signed. Fine. So they are part of our record. Must so we need to move ahead. Yeah, yeah. You know that's what they are. That's why people pass in the class. If you are taught by a good teacher, you pass. Uh, can I proceed? Um, 2.1, which is on page 5. Honorable colleagues, that is page 5 of the Auditor General's report. Page 5. On 30th January 2018 and 10th April 2018, documentation was requested relating to all closed banks, specifically the inventory report, the loan schedules, customer deposit schedules, Statement of Affairs and any reports supporting assets and liabilities taken over by BOU. However, I was, this is, I, however, I was not availed with sufficient documentation rela relating to Tefe Trust Bank to enable me to fulfill the specific audit objectives. 
Um, chair, uh, through the Governor Chair, the takeover of Tepe Trust Bank. First of all, read the following paragraph. Okay. Bank of Uganda management explained that it will continue to search in the archives to get all the information. Yes. So this actually confirms that the documents were not what? Availed. Correct? Uh, yes. Okay. Now what is your response, Bank of Uganda? Um, I would like to go through the various specific requests under this particular concern. With regards to statement of affairs. No, no, no. Start with the first. Okay. With regard to the inventory report. Yes. That, Mr. Chairman, was never provided. And uh, even in our search, as we indicate here, as we responded to the Auditor General, we have been unable to find any, any kind of inventory report. With regards to the loan schedules, and customer deposit schedules, in your opening remarks, you advise on how this shall be treated, and this is what shall Bank of Uganda shall do uh, with respect to this particular problem. Okay, let, 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 let's start this with colleagues. The first document which is being queried is the inventory report. We are in the same page, is that correct? Yes, that's correct. What is an inventory report? When you take over an institution, you take stock what? of the assets and liabilities of the institution, which eventually constitute an inventory. an inventory. Is that correct? That is correct, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, because I've heard a little bit of people writing, talking about uh, how people don't know what they are talking about, blah, blah. So, how will this process we are going through be useful? without us knowing what you took over. I, I don't know whether you get my point or our concern. Uh, Mr. Twinemas. Yes. Let's call me Twine. It's much Twine, okay. Yes. Mr. Mas Twine, if you are seated this side, in this chair, and you are the one doing this process, would this process be useful if we don't have an inventory report clearly showing what you took over and how because we are looking at how did the bank manage these assets and what and liabilities but without an inventory report tell me how will this process be useful Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman may he answer whether actually they have the inventory report he said no no I've already told you no sir uh, Mr. Chairman I take note of the concern, your concern, the concern of the committee. However, we have in our midst uh, a member of staff who was available during that time with the bank and perhaps he will be able to provide and help us understand why at that time no inventory report was taken of uh, the assets and liabilities of Tefe Trust Bank. Mr. Chairman and through the Governor, if I may, I would like to ask Mr. Sekavila to help us and Mr. Titus Murindwa who Titus Mulindo was the legal advisor during the transaction that take off of Tefe Trust, and Mr. Sekabira was with the bank at the time. Uh, uh, so, sorry, uh, let, let, let the chair conduct. If you have a concern, you raise let, this. Mr. Other chairman, Mr. Chairman, as a way to proceed, I think we are not dealing with personal issues. What we are dealing with are institutional issues. And institutions have procedures, ways in which they proceed. I think it would be proper for us to refer to the institution, not an individual. Mr. Chairman. Let me get the order. Honorable Seungu, Honorable Kasivante, Honorable Mijuche, Honorable Mbabali. That's the first round. And in that order, I don't have to remind so everybody knows when it's coming, then we take over. Yes? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think with your powers, 
The matter is, you have to compel Bank of Uganda to bring these documents. They have them. And in many sittings we have had with accountability committees, these people deny auditors' documents, but sometimes they later bring them. But what is happening here is just becoming adamant. Let me say this. If you look on the executive summary at the I bottom... I just want all of us to assume good faith until that point. That's what I'm saying. When it will be unreasonable on our part to assume good faith. But really, let us assume good faith until that point. I'm, I'm assuming good faith. Why? You see, uh, the reason they gave to the auditors why they caused the TFA Bank was because of insolvency. So where does it come from? It comes from their documents. Secondly, if you look at the Financial Insurance Act, why it was improved to that stage was because of these banks of 1993. 1993, because there was no career law by then that was leading to closure of banks. It was not so good, I want to say that. So I would request you, Mr. Chairman, Bank of Uganda must be compared to produce those documents. Since, and we have never heard of Bank of Uganda catching fire, but maybe some documents were banned, like in the public house by then. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, thank you. We are talking about we are closed because they failed to adhere to the normal standards, actually according to the laws of this country. Now we are speaking to people who are confessing that there is something wrong in the supervision department of Bank of Uganda. When Bank of Uganda explained to the Auditor General at the time of this report, it promised to go and search in the archives to get all the information. When we were here last week, it asked for two days. It actually got four. Now when we eventually meet, it says... No the other one is the Sunday people are in the church, so we don't, we don't work. When you are searching in the archives, you could even go there on Sunday, but it's okay. <laughs> but Mr. Chairman, now it is a confession, actually admission, that this bank doesn't have the reason why it closed its I, 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 I mean, let's do, in, no, no, I did want oh, to... Oh, no, no, let, it's not about you, please. But let, let me try to guide we are not going to reach any conclusion now, okay? I, I, let, let's make comments, but I don't want comments which, uh, which leads to a conclusion at this point. Thank you very what much. we could do, let us, we need this document, let us get the document. If the document is not there, we know what we'll do, okay? So no, no conclusions now. Yes, thank okay. you for the guidance, Mr. Thank Chairman. you, Mr. Kar Hold on. I was just wondering, actually, and concerned whether Bank of Uganda is not making such admission to actually bias our opinion as a committee. But why I wanted to reach is to ask for Bank of Uganda to confirm there are two circumstances under which this report may not be there. One is if it was misplaced. Two is if it was never there. And therefore would now say what was the basis of having this bank closed without any information on its stock. So Mr. Chairman and members, if the witness can confirm on two things, one, was it misplaced? Two, was it never there? Then you could begin from there to ask why could you make an opinion to close a bank whose information you didn't have. Honorable Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, in respect to the inventory report not available, then one asks uh, him or herself very many questions. whether Bank of Uganda knows what they took over. And if they did not know, then how did they proceed to take over? 
Is it deliberate that they don't want to provide this uh, report? Uh, is the report lost? Is it stolen? Or is, is it one of the confidential uh, 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 reports they don't want to provide to this committee? No, no, no. We, we've resolved the issue. Yes, of, of course, I know. Uh, I know. I am only wondering why somebody insists because you say they were searching for it at some stage and now somebody says we don't know where it is. Maybe they need to be clear to us on whether it was not taken and why the, it was not taken in, res, uh, in respect to the time um, this was done. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. In a situation whereby the inventory report is not available, definitely there's much, there isn't much the committee can do. I'm of the opinion it would be better for Bank of Uganda to do more research in their archives that the report is available. Otherwise, there's nothing much the committee can do without that inventory report. That is my case. Honorable Mon, Honorable Sheila Mwine, Honorable Mike, Honorable Anwar. In that order. Chairman, thank you so Stand much. Inside. Chair, before I ask for the inventory report, in the last meeting we had, uh, supervision, we are talking to you. In the last meeting we had, we asked for a report. Uh, we know very well that the law gives Bank of Uganda powers to open and close banks when need arises. We ask you for a manual for opening and closure of banks. We need to have the procedures that you go through, the policies, so that we know what is the benchmark that you use for you to be able to open or close a bank. We ask for that. We never got it. Now, going on to inventory, I don't want to believe that there is no inventory report. Uh, supervision, what do you use to make, your fi to, to make final accounts? What do you base on? Each of the banks, uh, through your chair, each of the banks is mandated to use an external auditor to verify their own accounts. And it's those published accounts and audited accounts that are shared with us and which we verify. Because on the record I see you made final accounts on this bank. That is, that is correct. And on your final accounts that I have here, I don't know if this is, is this the one? Madam, that is, that goes, that, that's a statement of the account, of the recovery account for the bank, not the final. This is the statement of accounts. Where did you get this statement? That was picked from the general ledger of the Bank of Uganda. That, you, that account reflects in money is received on behalf of Tefe Trust Bank and money used to pay either any services or, or liabilities. Uh, let's not bank. get a little bit diverted. At Ch this Ch point, Ch just one second, Honor Mom. We want two, three, four. We want a veteran report. We want the loan schedules, customer deposit schedules. We want those. Huh? Yes. And once we get those, we'll proceed. If we don't have, we will not proceed. It's provision. Yeah, we will not proceed because on what basis will we be proceeding? Supervision, do you use the inventory report to make some of these accounts? Because you must, the inventory is about assets and liabilities, and that's what you're quoting in your reports. Yes, the, the inventory of assets and liabilities is used to produce... Uh, a statement of affairs and the statement of affairs was only a requirement of the, after the FIA of 2004. Remember Tefe Bank was closed under the 1969 Banking Act which does not require okay. even, even if it was required at, it, even if it was not required at that time. Look at your figure. What do you have on your final accounts? On your statement of affairs? We run a risk of interrogating an issue where we have no basis. 
That's the problem. Because once we go into the substance of that, without the basics, we'll be ma- I don't think we'll be making okay, any progress. Okay, Chair, can I first have a response on the manual? Yes, that one is a legitimate. Uh, with regards to the manual, Bank of Uganda does not have a manual guideline on how it resolves banks. Um, however, right now, as we speak, we are in advanced stages of completing one. So it how, been, what, how do you close these banks? What do you look at for uh, uniformity purpose? Um, uh, through you, Chair, and through the Governor, each of the laws that we have governed out, the supervision function, has always provided for a mechanism for resolution. The 1969 Banking Act did not provide specific on terms of how banks were resolved. However, the FIA of 2004 provides a bit more detail in terms of what Bank of Uganda can and cannot do with regards to the resolution. It gives you what you can and what you can't, but it does not give you the integrities of how you should do it. I, I, admit, I admit. Does it tell you that you should get the statement of affairs? I admit or, uh, Does it tell you that you must check all the assets to value insured and all yes, the other? The FIA 2004 specifies that, yes. Much as it tells you to do that, why didn't you do, why didn't you get an inventory? I, 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 I think we will have to go back to the same thing. Can I now guide? We are at some point where we require documents to proceed. If, if we do proceed and go into this, I think we'll be making a big mistake. Uh, so, if I may guide, please. So, colleagues, there is no way this process will be of any use without these documents. So we'll have to take a decision one way or the other. Let, let me ask a specific question. Was there an inventory report? Uh, Was there an inventory? Yes, Mr. Sekavida. Uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, through the Governor. Uh, if I can, I would want to refer to our submission of documents under A1, A3, which you already have. Document A3. I don't know whether the yellow or the red, but most like it's the red file. Okay, what document is it? Red file, appendix. What document is it? It's a liquidation of Tefe Trust Bank. Don't count a document. Just say it is a document entitled this. Entitled liquidation of Tefe Trust Bank. Can I look at what they are? Signed by Edward Katimbo Mugwanya, Executive Director of Supervision. On the third page of that document, On the red file, appendix A3. Mr. Sekavira, are you referring to a document dated legal counsel, but or 13th March 2001? Yes, that's the one, dated. Well, the date March. they put their legal counsel, though I think it should have the typing. It is dated 13th March 2001, and where there is date they put legal counsel, but I think it is to the legal counsel. Is yes. that okay? Yes, that's the document. It is referenced eds.b.9. Chairman, Chair, I you wonder whether that is part of the confidential documents. I don't seem to be having it. No, no, no. no. The, these documents which are here Senior are not all that confidential. They are very important documents. What is confidential is this one, which is under key and law. Until the, the small committee studies them, then they will brief us. 
the such a man, this particular one we don't uh, have at least uh, this no it is question. on the can you mr secretary try to assist us because are we having the same files it is uh, honorable chair this, the same files are held by all the, me- the honorable members here Yes. Um, where, where are people? Uh, this document looks like this if he's the one he's referring to. Chair, yeah, yes, that's the one. It is and in the red file. And, and I want you, honorable members, to look at the third page of that document. You had misled us. It is under one, appendix one, not a three, at least according to the files we have. Okay. Mr. Secretary, please go ahead. Chair, on the third page of that document is uh, item number two, which shows the financial position of Tefed Trust Bank as at the date of closure. Uh, uh, Chair, if I can, I want to first give a background. Uh, but at what point are you trying to. Uh, this make? is the inventory. Where? This is the inventory of the bank, which was showing that uh, the assets of the bank were far less than the liabilities of the bank at the time of its closure. Are we talking about the same thing, Mr. Sekadira? Yes, yeah. Page The third page of that is called page one, but in terms of order, it is the third page of that document. And uh, item number two talks about the financial position of Tefe Trust Bank as a date of closure. Yeah, uh, 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 let, let, me, let me do this. Do you have an accountant here? Yes. Uh, uh, you are not in bank. <laughs> <laughs> we have both. I, I, do you have an, any of you have people from the accounts? Yes? Sir, what... Uh, Mr. Sekavira, don't do that, please. It's not correct. Okay? Yeah, I was going to show you the accountant. In the uh, no, 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 no. It isn't that. And I think it is wrong. Accountant, tell us what is an inventory. And I need a professional view of what an inventory is. Chair, through, uh, through the governor, what we have here is a statement. Please of leave that document. An inventory is a list. A list. A listing of the assets and liabilities. I have land plot number this located yes. here. I have cash this much. I have uh, this vehicle. That would be an inventory. That would be an inventory. Do you see an inventory here? What you, Mr. Sekaver is showing me. Yeah, it is not an inventory, it is a summary of the inventory. Ah, please. It's not an inventory, sir. Mr. Chairman, I, I, I need to steer this meeting properly, professionally, and with integrity. Because we are taking this process very seriously. And we are not here to embarrass anybody. But we want people to do the correct thing. I did say, Governor, some time back, when you met, that let this conversation we have with an institution be a value addition to it. We are not here to be looking at the cameras and so on. We are not doing that. We are mindful of the sensitivity of your institution. And we want to be a value addition to it. Please. So your officers should say, there is no inventory, and we see how we proceed. Oh, there was, Mr. Sekavia, you are there. Is there an inventory or not? So this other thing, please, please, please. 
Chair, I, I, through Governor, I wanted to say something about... Answer the question, then you'll say what you want. Is there an inventory? Like the accountant has said, and I, not that we didn't know it, but we wanted a confirmation. Is uh, there an inventory or not? A summary of the inventory. As, uh, is, where is the inventory? That's what because I even if you talk about a summary, mm. logically, it would arise from somewhere, then you summarize it. It is this, the, the inventory is the source document of the summary. Isn't that the accountant? Isn't that so? Use the mic. Mr. Chairman, uh, as a way forward, if you permit. Uh, let, let's sort this out first. But because you know, it's not much about Let us agree. There is no inventory, and we proceed. And we proceed. We are wasting a lot of time, really. Yes, Deputy Governor. Thank you, Chair. At the time of the closure of uh, TFA, the law was the 1969 law and the nature of documents required at that time to be kept and presented did not include the inventory so that we don't have that inventory as of now now point number two is from all the information that we've provided we've provided information relating to the financial position of TFA, the assets and the liabilities. And you will notice that in uh, number one, there is communication between the supervision department and the governor, and there is communication between Bank of Uganda and the Ministry of Finance on this issue, on the basis of the financial position of TFA. And the conclusion from all this communication is that the bank was insolvent. And the numbers provided do reflect that the bank was insolvent. And that was the basis of the closure. Please, please, please. I think there are two points here. It is true that the FIS specifically provides for it. But an institution that is acting prudently, if you are taking over a bank, an institution, did the law say don't give an inventory? Okay, the law didn't require. Did it say don't make an inventory? You can't move in an institution, take it over without acknowledging what you are, or documenting what you are taking over. Because there is no law the Deputy Governor, which says, don't do an inventory. But prudent, sound, and professional practice would require you to take an inventory. But, colleagues, the inventory is not there. So, can we go to the second point? We are going to have... No, 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 but, no, but, but I, Chair, how did they arrive? How did no, they no, no, no. We are, we are, let me tell you, the truth is, there is no inventory. But how did they arrive at the, at the summary? Uh, we, are we are going now to interrogate those details. Information but the point of... Because if we ask for a document which is not there, we will not get it. But chair, 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 chair. Okay, relax. I'm going to pick chair. all of you. All of you, all of you, all of you. Just relax, just relax. I'll start with somebody who has not said anything before. Okay? Can I have those who have not said anything to put up their hands? Uh, if you have not said anything before, can, yes, Sheila, and then uh, my own from East. Right. Thank you, Chair. Um, with, the, with the kind of discussion we are having, it seems like TFA Bank just dissolved to thin air. It is 
in our interest that we know who the directors of this bank are, first of all. I'm sure that is not confidential information. No, no, the list I have. Yes, we'd like it to go on record who they are that did not have an inventory and other documents as well. Secondly, that these documents were not available. Is it all of them or this specific one? And if the other documents are available, can we have them handed over to the auditor for auditing? Because in the auditor's report, he says he could not do anything because he had nothing whatsoever. Now, in the response from Bank of Uganda, they seem to have a few documents put together. Can they be handed over right away for auditing so that in, in going forward we know what we have and what we don't? Then finally, in the matrix, we find that the liquid data was actually Bank of Uganda. How did you go about... Yes, in the matrix, Bank of Uganda handled this directly. But on the file, we have a, a solicitor or auctioneers. That list seems to, show, to indicate that there is a, an inventory somewhere where they got this information. So if we can go to the file, we have solicitor auctioneers with their list of so many uh, properties that could have been liquidated. Thank you. Um, yes. Uh, the, the directors are here. The chairman, rest in peace, Sevana Chizito, the honorable. The number two, Professor Mugambe, Ike, I think he's still alive. Number three, Dr. M. Kasasa. Those people who come from around here, I don't know whether anybody. Is he alive? He's alive. There is Mr. Y.S. Chivuka. Uh, are you sure? Okay. The Honorable Sam Sevageka, RIP, rest in peace. Honorable Kabugo, MLK Kabugo. Is around? Yes. Mr. P. Mukasa. P. Mukasa. Users. Yeah. I could be Peter Mukasa living. Uh, uh, it, it, Mukasa it is here, P. Mukasa. I'm not abbreviating. I'm just reading it as it is. So this one we don't know. We shall try to ask those who are alive if he's still around. Reverend Dan Kajumba is alive but is out of the country. Then Mr. C. N. Kabenge. The Honorable Mbabal seems to know all of them. He's a part of <laughs> so, those are the directors, Honorable Shila. Then two, before I call upon other colleagues, we are talking about inventory reports. Let us talk about the loan schedules. No, we are going now, we get all the documents together. Yeah, just one second. Let, where are the loan schedules? Chair, I can see the ED looking around. He has not delegated this. No, no. Um, Chair, through the governor, even the loan schedules are not available. I have, at least in checking with the archives, we have failed to find them. However, on the other list of documents, the customer deposit schedule Let's is Let's go one by one. Is it true? Looks like Mr. Sekavila knows some more about it. Where are the loan schedules? Because they are referred to you... Your idiot referred to you. Yeah. The inventory is not there. Where are the loan schedules? Uh, I think the liquidator was liquidating assets and recovering loans because he also returned certain documents and title deeds to Bank of Uganda okay. after he had completed his exercise. Yeah, sure. uh, I want to imagine that. They are in an archive which has been located, are not been located yet, but they are there. Yeah, they are there. Mr. Chairman, 
Let's go to guide us, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And then, sorry, Nathan. Yes, uh, l- 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 colleagues, I-, I just want to be as fair as possible to everybody. So that everybody. So, if you know you've spoken, let allow some person, other than this one I've already picked, from that point, if, he, if there's somebody who has not spoken and his hand is up, it's fair enough that we pick him. But this, this one I've already what? Picked, can speak. Thereafter, that will be the rule. With exception of vice. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman, thank you very much. Um, you, you made the right decision after choosing the right people. <laughs> Uh, my interest, in Mr. I Chairman, to have the residual right to receive the decision of <laughs> I, I, I appreciate you have not exercised it, Mr. Chairman, and you're not about. My concern is that there must be somebody responsible for preparing these documents in the institution. May we be advised on who was supposed to prepare some of these documents and where that person, he or she, is because before I uh, not trust but I ask the executive director to take responsibility I want to know that particular person who was charged with the responsibility that was a never executed or executed badly that we cannot find the documents I'm, I'm interested in knowing how you take over somebody's bank and you say there is no list of properties. You don't have a list of liabilities that lead to the closure of somebody's bank. I am interested in knowing where that person is hiding. I think he's not hiding. Just say where is that person. Uh, yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, <laughs> chair, can you hear me? Yeah. Now, Chair, I, I have this document which I referred in the file. Uh, this document, according to the Deputy Governor, they are saying Tefe was closed using the law of 1969. When you read this document, the reasons for closure are spelled out in FIS of 1993. And Tefe was closed in 1993. So I want to find out which law did he use. That is the number. Number two, Chair, this very document is showing what the bank was doing before the closure the findings and after the closure. So for Tefe, what did you do before? Which findings do you have and what did you have after? Because the other banks, their information is very clear here. Those are the two clarifications uh, clarification that I want to get here. Yeah. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I have yeah, more limiting questions, but uh, Mr. Chairman, I, I want to state this, that whenever these uh, officers from Bank of Uganda come to respond to you sarcastically and taking matters lightly, they are pushing us to become tough to them. And when we raise our tempers, you will just control them, because we, are know, we know them as professionals. Where they are failing to play their role, we cannot leave it, and most especially when they are playing with your chair. But, Mr. Chairman, first of all, why we have these recordings is because you are keeping records. Not so? Now, we have two positions here, and we have not expanded the one. Mr. Sekabira? Mr. Sekabira? Uh, this one I'm facing here. Richard, he stated that this was an ex- he called it a, a summary, a, 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 a summarized the inventory. And the Deputy Governor Bank of Uganda says there was no inventory. We have two statements on the floor, this committee, and as if we are keeping them. So between you, Mr. Deputy Governor, 
and your subordinate who is telling us the truth. Then, secondly, as I conclude, when you look at what Mr. I'm sorry I came in late. Uh, Honorable Badiri, I've seen you. Mr. Sekavira. He, speaking after Honorable uh, he, gave, he was trying to explain. I'm concluding. Maybe. Hmm? No, no, no. I just want to... Yeah, she had a procedure matter and I thought so. No. Okay. Okay. So, I, 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 I want to ask these people in a, 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 the simplest language possible. If you have a document you have presented within your file, showing list of tangible assets auctioned. Mr. Chairman, that is at, he has no page, however, but the heading is this, uh, solicitor's auctioneers. How did you arrive at these documents if there was no inventory? That's the question. Order. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Procedure. Order. Yeah, procedure takes precedence over order. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I can't see. Mr. Chairman, wouldn't it be procedure right that um, we get the witness state whether all these required documents as raised in the Auditor General's report are available or not, all of them. And Mr. Chairman, when I draw the, to your attention the last line from the Auditor General's report, they're saying that Bank of Uganda management explained that they will continue to search into the archive to get all the information. And at this point, Mr. Chairman, wouldn't we be, be, be a procedure right that they get to us all the available documents, or all of them not available, and then we proceed, rather than reacting on one document at a go. Because as members, we are going to take a lot of time, Mr. Chairman. Wouldn't that be procedurally right? Uh, Honorable Babari, yes, you know press procedure takes precedence over order, so my hands are, are tied. Mr. Chairman, I'm raising this procedure issue in respect to Rule 205 uh, D 205 D. And I want to, I wish to read it verbatim first, first of all. It says. Uh, in the exercise of its function is a committee shall have the powers of the High Court for one but my interest is in it too comparing the production of documents Mr. Chairman, there are two issues we have to separate there is what has been called the requirement of the law and I'm not an expert there but there is what I think is the requirements of the professional discipline. We are talking about finance. An inventory is a requirement of this professional discipline, finance. It may not be a requirement of law, but it is a basis. And I want to understand this as a teacher. It may not be a requirement of production of the, the, the examination script. But when I produce marks and I'm doubted, I could be compelled to bring in the script on which I based my awarding of the marks. Mr. Chairman, is it indeed procedure correct that we invoke Rule 205B2 to compel Bank of Uganda not to ask, we have been asking, but now the rule says compel production of the documents that in the report of the Auditor General itself, he is lamenting that he could not fulfill the objectives of his audit because these documents were hid from him. Now, we have got confession that a report, was, there is something actually, a summary, and it could only be drawn from an inventory report. Now, that is enough confession that these documents are just hidden from the committee of parliament 
as they were hidden from the auditor general at the meeting of this report. Further procedure, uh, Chair. Okay, okay. Procedure. No, 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 there are two procedure points which I've got to rule on. This will now. help, Chair. Let me rule, let me rule, because you see, I may even forget. Um, because this meeting, as we go on, we may not make any progress. So I, I have to take a decision somehow. I know members really have burning questions. And can I seek indulgence of uh, colleagues? Honorable Babadili's hand has been up for almost I don't know how many times. So let me hear from Honorable Babadili. Then I wrote, I'll make a ruling on the two procedure points yes. that have been raised uh, by thank colleagues. Thank you very much at last for picking my hand. I, am, I apologize. Dear person, uh, our people, our visitors are saying the event is not there. It's very clear. They say it's not there. It's not there. But now, they say they're using the old law we, of which are 96 and something. It is the one. Can we have that law to read? Maybe the name inventory is not there. They were using another name. Can you get that old law? And we could. If because they could be using that law that time. Can we find out that law? And find out what was the requirement that time. So that we don't stick to inventory, inventory which was just created recently. Thank you very much. <laughs> procedure, Chair. Final procedure. Chair, when you look at the Constitution of Uganda, Article 90, 90C, and I'm in agreement with my brother, Honorable Casvante, where it says the committee shall have powers of High Court. But the specific one here, that this committee shall have the powers to compel the production of all the documents that would require. This is the constitution, which is the supreme law. And okay. Uh, colleagues and governor and uh, members of staff of the bank, I think there are three points here. The first one is whether these documents are there and the bank is not availing them to the committee. Two, whether these documents were not there in the first place. Either way, it is not a very good situation. Either way. You, you can't plead that this is a better situation. Because if you are going to take over an institution, and the, 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 your case is they don't need to require me to, to state what I'm taking over mm. uh, uh, really prudent and professional you should be able to do that I mean anybody doing you should be able to list what he's taking over because at some point your accountability will be what you have taken over that is the point because you cannot account for something which you have not listed so if you didn't make it, there is a problem there. If you made it and somehow you are not availing it, there is also a problem there. But I don't want to make an order in vain. Even the courts of law don't make orders in vain. I don't want to say, can I have that document, when actually the document is not there. Because there is a risk that somebody might go and actually Doctor. create one if you want it let me create one for you uh, but I don't think that will be the case so le let's do this we are just on the first query we have not made any progress I, I don't know that it's the governor or EADS le le let's have in, in, in our, uh, real, real terms, is this inventory report in existence? Has it ever been in existence or not? I think it is Mr. Sekavila who seems to have an idea about it. And because we are closing this. But I've told you the consequences of both 
prepare the inventory report in the form that would be required by the Auditor General is not available. It has not been in existence. But I also want to give further clarification that the other two lists that you are talking about have been advised by the staff here that list of loans and list of deposits are actually available. They were not supplied to the committee because of confidentiality issues around personal information. But, but, but Mr. they Secretary. actually are available. Mr. Secretary, yes. I thought we had agreed. And the governor had put it in writing. See, I have this, but they are confidential. Mm -hmm. And we have agreed that any confidential matter is going to be treated as such. Where is the problem? I just want to know where the problem is. And then I have to caution, governor. Your institution also leaks documents. I have to caution. Your institution leaks documents. Don't leak some of those documents. Then you say it is us who have leaked them. Please, your institution leaks documents. Because some of us are already in possession of what would have otherwise been documents which would not be in possession of. So, you need to plug your, your leakages. You have to plug it. I, I, and I'm really giving this as wise counsel. So, you have your documents. If you bring them in and they are confidential, I'll treat them as confidential. That you get my word. But don't leak them yourselves. Because you have a point to score against each other. I must say this. Don't leak documents because you have a point to score against each other. Colleagues, there is no inventory. We shall have a discussion about it and make our conclusions. Two, we want the loan schedules and the deposit schedules. Sorry? Procedure. Procedure. Uh, Mike, then Francis. Oh, oh. Mike, Francis, because I've already mentioned he has spoken before, but Malgoma hasn't. And Mbabas. The, okay, let's have all of you but two, three minutes, because I, 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 I seem to have formed an opinion that I must let Bank of Uganda go to this stage. And we are going to tell them what we need and we, when we need them. We are going to give them timeline. Mr. Chairman, I asked for a man or woman who was supposed to prepare these documents and is not anywhere. Chair. Yes. Uh, Chair, through the governor, if I may respond, I think that question would be best addressed by the former EDS, Mr. Chibirige, who can be found. I actually don't know him. You are supposed to bring that person. I was, I was asked the question, who? Uh, let's do this. When we, because there are some people who are no longer in your services, but the law requires you public officers, that's the problem. It's the law. Whether you leave public service, when it comes to issues, when you're in the office, you can always be required to come and account. So at some point, we may require some of those people to come and explain. Because some, I don't expect that the deputy governor knows what goes on in each and every detail in the department or the governor even. So the officer, the desk officer who has that knowledge can be able to explain to us, I think. That is assuming if you think you can't. If you, you can explain, that's okay with us too. Mike, Francis, Moses, uh, Honobo Mbabazi, in that order. And I'm not going to come again because I'll close Honobaja, Ingenia, Vicent. And we close. Thank you, Chair. Chair, mine is uh, in addition of the requirements to give us better clarity. I think we also need a list of the shareholders on top of the directors because their interest is a pertinent Do, in the running of the That bank. will get, we don't even have to ask them. I could, I, I could write to the Registrar General, they will bring them here. 
Number but two. But they have them, so you can bring the list. Mm. Number two, chair. Of course, you do realize the fair has not been uh, concluded for the last 25 years. And you cannot conclude the fair without an inventory. Neither have they provided on site or off site reports. So, on top of the list that you require, we wish to have those reports because it is the reason that prompted them to engage that consultant to do a summary that they are exhibiting. So, we need the on site and off site reports. But to my reports problem is one. If you have to do a summary, you need to have the... Absolutely. Where do you get the summary from? And uh, Mr. Chairman, if Francis, I can come in now. I done, Mike? Yes, Francis. Mr. Chairman, if I may come in now, you realize there is a contradiction between what the gov the governor is saying and Mr. Sekadura. And that's why I would want us to use uh, ATCO I mean, our rules of procedure 205 D1 to ask them to take oath. So, because now this one says this is a summary, this one says it never exists, so who do we believe? Don't you think the witnesses are now starting to contradict themselves and in that way we ask them to take oath so that we know that uh, we know who is telling us the truth or they or rely on oath? Uh, that, that, that will cross it. So, let me make my ruling. Device. You see, it, we don't rush to take decisions. Mm -hmm. We will take a decision. Especially when we go into details of uh, examining the truthfulness of, of people. Then we can take that decision. Uh, so, not now. We will not take it now. But I, I think you, what you've done, the Francis, to put them on notice that eventually they may be required to go on what? On off. Uh, thank you, Chair. It was me. Yes, it was uh, Moses. Uh, thank you, Chair. There is something which is interesting here and which I think Bank of Uganda should tell us the truth. There is a document signed by Katimbo Mugwanya just after the, 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 the financial position of the FA bank it was written on 16th February 2001 to the executive director bank as supervision. It reads, please find attached a list of land titles. Please find attached a list of land titles and promissory notes for the balance of the unsold properties returned by the auctioneers solicitor auctioneers whom we contracted to carry out the sale but failed to attract buyers for them really what does that mean and when we are talking about the inventory what are we talking about I request through you, Honorable Chair, the Vice Chair has quoted Article 90 of the Constitution. The rules of procedure are clear. Would it be procedural right for the team of Bank of Uganda? to be put on oath about what they are saying. But 
that have already made a ruling. You know, it's the same point which was raised by the Honorable Tumijuji. Thank you. Yeah. What, but to re-emphasize, when eventually we go into the substantive responses by the bank, we'll go case by case and person by person. If we find a person's demeanor uh, is such that it raises the issue of him being truthful, then we take a decision whether we put him on oath or not. Uh, we will not have a blanket oath-taking ceremony. Uh, but it's all about individuals and how he's responding to the, uh, to the queries. And if you find him useful, uh, truthful, there's no need to put anybody on oath. However, if in our opinion somebody seems to be holding some information, then we will take a decision, an appropriate decision at an appropriate time. Honorable Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we have all along we are just moving around the word even today, even today. You to me, before you go any further, there must be something to do with collusion between the directors then of TEFE and some of the workers in Bank of Uganda. Because there is no way you can have this summary of events the way the land was supposed to be. Honorable Yes. Honorable I made this at the beginning of this process. We are going to take a decision based on the facts we have. We don't have to judge anything at this point. However, in our mind, questions have started arising out of this short interaction. So let us not make any definitive statement about whatever it is. But we shall have time for conclusions and debate over those issues. Mr. Chairman, in the interest of time also, could they then bring their loan schedule, the schedule of loans and deposits? Let us know whether they are there. Since there is no inventory, we may find that those ones are also not there. The loan and deposit schedule. I think they we be in the know if they are there. For purposes of the record, they say I had that the loan schedules, the deposit schedules are available. Okay, uh, because I think that's the movement schedules we needed, and they are available. Thank you very much, okay. Mr. Chair. I think this means. Uh, what happened to ladies first these days? Thank you very much, Honorable Chair. In addition to what you requested that they should bring, Honorable Chair, they should also bring the statement of affairs of Tefe Trust Bank at the time of closure. Then, on page, page two, where we have the recreation constraints, there is what they call well secured loans. According to the report, the well secured loans were 62.62 62 million point three. What does well secured loan mean in this case? Another thing, do you have any breakdown of the 62 million? The honourable member, as we are not going to the substantive aspects of this until we finish this point, which document available, we have time to go through them, then we can go into the substantive aspects of the queries. Yes, going in here. Okay, thank you, Chair. Uh, for me, I'm not an expert in financial matters, but sometimes I keep money in the banks, and I'm very concerned uh, if I was a depositor of TEFE, because the governor, in his statement, on page three, he informed us that they are making good progress to conclude the resolution of some banks, and the TFA is not one of them. So I'm wondering if such critical information is missing, how is the process to conclude the resolution of this that, bank? That will, come later, example, that will come later. It, it, because it's substantive. Yes. Yes, substantive. And actually, that's the eventual question which you'll have to ask. Okay. Not now. Let's limit ourselves to this. Thank 
Mr. Chair, I want to raise an issue related to what the donor was going to raise, that the, the bank, the BOU, is the liquidator, but there were people who participated in the process. I think it would be prudent that they appear and they give us their version of the story mm -hmm. and the documents they found. Uh, then, uh, from what we can see, there are attempts to give us some of the, 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 the documents that were needed by the auditors. They are not attempts. They yeah. are going to give us. They were attempts even before they can give us. Because you can see they have shortages on some securities on some of the loans which have been provided here. But then where were the details? How did they get that without the details? And uh, I'm also, of course, then our uh, brother confirmed that indeed the loan schedules are available. But the external auditors noted that they were not given. So my question is, why didn't you give them to the auditors? Because at least the one of loans would be knocked off. But you can see the auditor is also saying that he did not receive the copy of the loan schedules. So why didn't you give them to the auditors? Thank you, Chair. Well, um, I think the issue of sensitivity and confidentiality, we've already sorted it out. We are moving ahead. We don't have to repeat ourselves. Um, I could see, for example, in this red file, what you call statement of accounts. As it is here, it makes no sense. And an accountant would know this. I don't know whether you've looked at it, sir, in detail. Because there is nothing to be audited about. It is so anonymous. Huh? But we shall go into the, the, the substance of it. What would require are documents which answer the query. That's why at some point I was a little bit rude. I said, look here, some of this is in paper. Because materials which are submitting to the committee should be able to answer the what? The query. So this is this query and this is the document that answers that query. So, Governor, when you need to tell your staff to look at these documents, go back to the queries as raised by the Auditor General. Query by query. And then say, on oh, this is what the auditors are saying is missing. Some of them, the documents, yes, they are here, but they don't answer the queries. And we don't want to go through again this and again and again and this. So they need to go back answer the queries and the professionals are there mr what's the name mr richard. not the accountant richard. i don't know the names richard so you are there and you are supposed to be assisting this institution read the query and say well what does this require require me this query what does it require me to answer because even if you, these documents are here and they have not answered the query we will have wasted time and then this conversation is going to be longer and longer. Members will be asking questions and questions, and we go round and around, and wasting a lot of Bank of Uganda's time. That's money. All of you are here because the bank seems even to be like at a standstill when I see everybody here. Our time. <laughs> can, can I now say? Chair, my question. I know everybody still wants to comment. Chair, Chair, my question is not answered, Chair. You know, Chair, this is an institution and a committee that looks at the legal regime. So I want to know. From I, 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 know I know why I, I didn't want them to answer, because there is no answer for it. Chair, it is there, because the records are clear. Uh, uh, let me say, you, but you don't you answer, you answer about the legal regimes and so on. Because you see, what I don't agree with, and we have repeated this over and over again. Even if the law has not specifically told you, like the FIS does, that take an inventory, you, as a profession taking over somebody's assets, structurally, you need to do a record. No, that 
don't go into the substantive defense. You are going to have, have opportunity. So, Governor, at this point, <laughs> you see when they raise the issue of procedure, my hands Mr. are Ch tied. Mr. Chairman. But uh, deny the procedure should come after I've spoken, not when I'm still speaking. Though, if I conclude, then you not have opportunity to raise it also. Mr. Which Chairman. is still okay for the chair's side. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, I think it would be of in our interest as a committee if we proceeded by also calling the auditors of Tefe Bank then to also come before the committee so that they tell us how they used to move without loan, loan schedules, inventories, deposits. We need to know how those auditors used to do it of Tefe Bank then. I know it's within our interest. You see, that point will come when we are looking at substantive the query in the absence of the inventory report. Then we can ask all those questions. And uh, also I have to put, uh, put uh, the bank at notice that we shall require some of these people who are involved, like uh, those agents of yours. Is it, what is it? So let's start. Yes, we shall require them to come because they are the ones who are handling some of these issues. Col colleagues? Mr. Chairman, I'm requesting for guidance before you rule. And I'm relating it to what the auditor observed. Because the auditor says, because of this limitation, of course of not having the documents available, I could not assess the status of the assets and liabilities of Tefe Trust Bank from closure to date. And Mr. Chairman, we are dealing with a special audit and there were limitations. We would be basing on the recommendations of the auditors. From what I'm, I'm requesting you to guide on, are we going to do the special audit ourselves or if the limitations that led to the auditor not finish the audit process, the documents are now provided, is the auditor going to look at the documents and do the audit and make recommendations to us. That's what I want you, Mr. Chairman, to guide on. Uh, how do we always proceed? When we get information, documents, we refer them to the auditors because they are the professionals. We are not auditors. We are not going to start auditing. But when we get the information, we refer them to the profession to go through them Sometimes if they are satisfied, they say so. But even if they say so, we also have a right to go through what they have. Because a few of us have some idea about some of these issues. So it's not that when we get the Auditor General's uh, report, it is conclusive. No. But we are not going to do auditing. Because we, we don't do auditing. We refer them to the professionals. Okay, uh, colleagues, uh, Governor, I, I wish we had made some progress, but somehow I think we have made some progress. No, no you don't speak to me except through the Governor. He's the one who can give you an audience. I, I hope that's how your institution should work. Okay. Uh, thank you, Chair, and through you, Governor. If you refer to the part in front of you, under part one, the statement of affairs that was being, is being requested as part of the list of the documents is actually provided here. There's a document from Solesta Auctioneers. Who, 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 who said the, we needed a statement of affairs? No. Well, it, it's on the list of the... This, yes, there are those who, which are here, yes. and we have seen them, but there are those which are missing. We are interested in those that are missing. Those which are already here, we are not asking you to produce them again. Because we actually, we have read this box five. <laughs>
Why don't you let this chairman rule and we proceed? I, I want to inform uh, through Mr. Chair that he, actually what we are trying to submit is the reason why we are demanding for an inventory. Secondly, I want to find out through Mr. Chair, you as Bank of Uganda, do you have your own inventory? Do you have one for Bank of Uganda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the, I, I want to end with this, Mr. Chairman. That he, how would you, in the eyes of these cameras and Ugandans, how do you think people would trust you with it? Because one of your key roles uh, is, uh, is uh, keeping on, the on our, on our soul, yeah. on our soul. Mm-hmm. Th- That point will be made later. Uh, yes. That, uh, l- 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 I don't want to even t- to go on record. That point will be made at the appropriate time, not now. That we call it exit meetings, when we have already taken decisions. As of now, we have no decision we've taken. We've just listened, and we have no decision taken, really. Yeah. So, I have to, I have to adjourn this meeting at this point. Uh, Governor, may you therefore forward to us, we are going to resume this meeting on Wednesday, we are going to give you only one day, tomorrow. And when we come, we like to see it day every day until we sort this thing out. Two, three days, we hope so, we'll be able to be done with you people. However, now that you are coming and you are going to look at TFA, all those people who are involved in the institutions, please invite them. Because some questions, they, be, they are the ones who will be in a position to answer. Like I've seen, is it Solesta auctioneers? You should be able to answer, uh, not you people who are in the office now. So, do one thing. Go back to the Auditor General's report. Read about documents that were required and were not provided. And you have not provided them in this. And then please forward them by. Sorry? Um, we, I, I think let, let's give them the two days. One day, they are saying it's not enough, and th- there is no miracle about any other day in between. So this meeting is adjourned to Thursday, especially now that they are going to invite other people who are not here. So this meeting will be adjourned to Thursday, 10 o'clock. Can I have those documents? Let us went because we want to look at them before we come for the meeting. Because the meeting has been invited, it has been adjourned to Thursday. But I need those documents before. When is that? When is that? Are you Okay. Uh, Mr. Executive Director, Banker Supervision, Twine, provide those documents latest lunch time on Wednesday. It should be by cover of letter. It should be by cover of letter. It should be addressed to the chairperson and make sure the chairperson receives them. So, don't throw documents at the reception. Make sure the chairperson receives them. No, no. <laughs> okay. And they should be delivered in person to the chair. Lunch time on. And lunch time is 1 p.m. Okay. So, Thank you very much, and please submit those documents. Colleagues? Tuyenza tuyenza ego chari ku BBS Telefina iyobu waka 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 waka